Cool, let's build it. pretty well um, looks like there's a few chases that didn't really transfer again they're on the edge of the board so uh, it's most likely the same problem where the that I've had in the past where the uh, pressure isn't really consistent across this entire piece here one being iron so yeah right in there it's not big though it's one or two traces so I'm gonna touch those up with a sharpie and then uh, go ahead and etch this My beautiful touch-up work is done. Uh, it's actually not too beautiful, but it should work. This is the FTDI connector right here, and missing half of the pads basically, so I had to redo all those. It'll be fine. Um, cup here, there were a few missing pads for the digital I/O pins, and uh, other than that, there were a couple like really small traces that didn't transfer too well. But uh, it'll be fine. So let's go etch it. This is uh, ferric chloride. Make sure when you're working with any kind of etchant solution, you have proper eye protection and you're also wearing chemical resistant gloves, as I am right now. And uh, you also want to be working in a well-ventilated place or have some kind of respirator on as well. Uh, if that's not an option, then don't stand directly over this and <laughs> breathe in the fumes, basically. You want to create a little bit of different distance for yourself.
Alright, I cleaned up the board and I ran under the sink with a uh, scotch Bright pad to take all of the transfer film off of it and it's looking pretty good. There's a couple traces by the FTDI header area that uh, that I drew in and they actually, I guess the Sharpie didn't stick and it came off in the etching process. So when I go to solder this board, I'm going to have to make some solder bridges or jumpers or something down there. But other than that, everything's pretty good. I'm really happy with how precise it worked out. I wouldn't really want to make something or make a more intricate design using transfer film it kind of has its limitations so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to tin plate it using liquid tin from mg chemicals and that uh gives a like a layer of protection to all the traces and also makes it a lot easier to solder so that's pretty easy i'm going to go ahead and do that and maybe we'll put a solder mask on it and then drill everything out populate it with the components and we'll be done Okay, I finished populating the board, everything's all soldered up. Um, I tested it real quick, giving it power, and uh, the appropriate pins on here have 5 volts, so it works basically. Um, 
It looks pretty decent. I had to clean off all this flux. I'm just gonna use like, like a Q-tip and some rolling alcohol. This is basically like the most complicated design or most intricate design that I would do with transfer paper, as I said. Um, a few traces didn't work. It got pretty ugly down in the FTDI area. But for the most part, it's pretty good. The tin plating on the traces, um, they were really nice to solder to, so definitely do that again. And uh, yeah, I'll clean it up. And that's that, basically. The 5 volt regulator really won't get hot on a normal operation. The 18 mega 328 is not going to draw more than like 20 milliamps or anything like that. Um, with this design, there are three jumpers on it, which is very good uh, considering that it's a solid or it's a single-sided board. So, you know, this is a copy of a uh, Arduino Di Similia or Dulamina Nova or something like that, and those are all like double-sided and they have multiple layers and stuff like that. So. Considering that it's a single-sided board, only three jumpers is pretty good, so uh, pretty impressive PCB layout. Some of the traces are really, really tiny for making this at home, but uh, it, it worked. So anyway, that's that, and uh, I'm probably going to put like a zero insertion, force, zero insertion force socket in there at some point. Uh, I think SparkFun sells them, but for now, this works fine. Thanks for watching.